This lecture is about C. L. R. James' book, The Black Jacobins, Toussaint Louverture, and the Saint Domingue Revolution. I'm D. Elizabeth Glasgow, and I'm your lecturer for this series. C. L. R. James' book, The Black Jacobins, is a powerful and definitive history of one of the most important but underrecognized events in history, the slave revolution that took place in Haiti from 1791 until 1803. The book is important not only as a historical account of the event, but as one of the very first examples of history told from the point of view of the oppressed population, in this case the slaves of the island. James was a politically engaged journalist from Trinidad, and he spent considerable time in the book discussing the truly awful conditions of slavery in Saint-Domingue, as Haiti was then called. He looked at before the revolution and the remarkable leadership qualities of the slave-turned-revolutionary Toussaint Louverture. James' outlook in the book was very much influenced by Marxist philosophy, and this is what set the book apart from other accounts by other scholars of the Haitian Revolution. James wrote, The revolt is the only successful slave revolt in history, and the odds it had to overcome is evidence of the magnitude of the interests that were involved. Beyond the bottom-up history, that is, history told from the perspective of the marginalized rather than those of the elite status or politically influential members of society, readers of the Black Jacobins will gain a greater understanding of the political dynamics of the late 18th century. Now this includes not only the events in Saint-Domingue, but the influence of the revolutions that took place in both America and France, and the key role that slavery played in these politics. When you're looking at a book like The Black Jacobin, you will be able to gain a fuller appreciation of the truly barbaric practice and the nature of the economies that were built from that practice of slavery. Now, the book is a radical work, and so it will appeal to readers who lean towards revolutionary politics, but it is also a work that is very engaging to a wider audience. So let's look at the work in the context of how it was written. The book, The Black Jacobins, is an example of what is called history from below. Now, although the term itself denotes works of history told from the perspective of people of low social and economic status, it was only used by historians long after The Black Jacobins was published in 1938. James' book was one of several works that inspired the field of subaltern or postcolonial studies. Here, historians from the branches of social inquiry which deal with the various legacies of the colonial period, write history from the point of view of the subalterns, the subalterns being those groups that have been excluded from traditional power structures and opportunities, like slaves and peasants. James's approach to history, and indeed the whole of the subaltern school, cannot be understood without appreciating the works of Karl Marx, whose idea of history was shaped by the German philosopher Hegel's notion of the dialectic, a word that denotes the tension created between an idea or concept and the reactions that rise up in opposition to it. This antithesis eventually leads to a kind of synthesis, a fusion of the two ideas. Karl Marx built on this idea of the dialectic to develop his notion of historical materialism, where history is pushed forward by economic forces. The word materialism here should not be confused with its contemporary meaning, which is a focus on material possessions. Rather, Marx believed that the driving force of history was how the means of production, or the tools and resources used to produce goods and services, how those are owned and organized in any society. For example, in a capitalist society, most economic activity is in private hands, and businesses act in a way that promotes the profits 
and interests of their owners. As Marx wrote in the German Ideology, this mode of production must not be considered simply as being the production of the physical existence of the individuals. Rather, it is a definite form of activity of these individuals, a definite form of expressing their life, a definite mode of life on their part. As individuals express their life, so they are. He went on to write in the 18th Brumaire of Louis Bonaparte, Men make their own history, but they do not make it as they please. They do not make it under self-selected circumstances, but under circumstances existing already, given and transmitted from the past. The tradition of all dead generals weighs like a nightmare on the brains of the living. So, in other words, Marx believed that individuals tended to see the world according to their role within the means of production, as business owners, for example, or as wage earners. The interests of those often competing groups is what drives history, according to Marx. Antonio Gramsci extended Marx's theory to the discussion of culture, and in doing so, laid the groundwork for subaltern history, or history from below. Put simply, Gramsci developed a theory of cultural hegemony, stating that the dominant social class, for example the bourgeoisie or the business owners, not only had a big influence over the economy, but they had a big influence over a society's culture as well. Gramsci believed that the creation of an alternative or proletarian culture, that is a culture of the workers promoting revolutionary ideas, that these were necessary for the overthrow of capitalism and the rise of the communist state. So to some extent this is also the goal of subaltern studies, of which the black Jacobins plays a very early part. Subaltern studies represent the history of groups excluded from the dominant culture. While James was strongly influenced by a Marxist approach to history, the Black Jacobins is not rooted in any particular academic school or debate. Rather, it emerged from the tense political environment of the late 1930s. C.L.R. James was a keen observer of both political events and cultural developments, and there is some evidence that the author was inspired by his immediate surroundings in London while he was writing The Black Jacobins. In The Black Jacobins, C.L.R. James asked a central question, how did a group of uneducated slaves in what is today Haiti successfully overthrow their colonial masters and defeat the invasions that followed from France, from Britain, and from Spain? As the only successful slave revolt in history, the events in Saint-Domingue warrant attention. As an historian, James Aim is to describe the slave revolt from the point of view of the revolutionaries and their leader, Toussaint Louverture. Throughout James's historical investigations, he is asking another question as well. What is the nature of revolution? And what are the conditions in which the proletariat, or the workers, can overthrow those responsible for their oppression? Although James does not explicitly frame his discussion in these terms, his political viewpoint informs his discussion of history. James's Marxist beliefs also place the book squarely in the heart of the political conflicts of the late 1930s. As he writes, the violent conflicts of our age enable our practiced vision to see into the very bones of previous revolutions more easily than heretofore. He refers to the violent upheavals going on across Europe at the time, the eve of World War II. He notes the revolts held by the fascist leader in Spain when he writes of Franco's heavy artillery and refers to the mass repression in the Soviet Union when he writes of the rattle of Stalin's firing squads. Such is our age and this book is of it, with something of the fever then and the fret. He writes in the Black Jacobins, The writer has sought not only to analyze, but to demonstrate in their movement the economic forces of the age, their molding of society and politics, of men in the mass and individual men, the powerful reaction of these on their environment at one of those rare moments when society is at boiling point and therefore fluid. 
As a work of history, the Black Jacobins builds upon previous works on the Revolution in Saint-Domingue, and the conditions there more generally, much of it published in French. These works include scholarly histories, first-person accounts, official archives, and travel books. James provides an annotated bibliography of these works in the book, in which he writes, Despite the importance and interest of the subject, it was for long difficult to find in English or French a comprehensive treatment of the Saint-Domingue Revolution. Both in insight and objectivity, the Haitian writers are easily the best. James draws on a long list of sources, notably Colonel Henri de Poyon Belize, and his history of 1899, Histoire Militaire de la Révolution de Saint-Domingue, or A Military History of the Revolution of San Domingo. James writes of this book, This is the official French account. Poyon misunderstands the whole campaign, both the offensive plan of Leclerc and the defensive plan of Toussaint. There is no limit to the brazenness of these imperialist historians. Despite disagreeing with Poyon's version of history, James finds the historian to be a careful scholarly writer and is able to build on Poyon's work. This is a theme in James's work. Though he frequently disagrees with the work of scholars who went before him, he finds that he can use their work in his own. In an important way, James's history of the Haitian Revolution builds on the work of the scholars of another revolt that started barely two years earlier, the French Revolution. As he notes in The Black Jacobins, it is impossible to understand the Saint-Domingue Revolution unless it is studied in close relationship with the Revolution in France. Fortunately, the French historical school of the French Revolution is one of the greatest historical schools of Western civilization. James lists in the book several French historians who inspired his own study of the Haitian Revolution. They exposed the economic foundations of the French Revolution. They wrote about the personalities of the main actors and covered the politics of the period. James credits these influences in the book on the Haitian Revolution. I have sought all through to show the direct influence of the French Revolution on events and leading personalities in Saint-Domingue. It appears from James's biography that the awareness of and interest in this history was sparked when he moved to Europe in the 1930s. In that sense, the intellectual basis of the work is James's attempt to unify his understanding of West Indian culture, that is the culture of the islands of the Caribbean Sea, and history with the debates over history and politics going on at the time in England and France. So in other words, James was very much influenced by historians of the French Revolution when he wrote The Black Jacobins. This is D. Elizabeth Glasgow. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.